Polyphagotarsinemus lattice. The genus name means tarsinemid that eats many plants, and it is the binomial name for the broad mite, a very common and difficult to control pest species. Tarsinemids are known as, as thread footed mites. mites, and most are not known to be serious plant pests, but both the broad mite and the cyclamen mite have a special adaptation that lets them proliferate. The ability to inject phytotoxic compounds during feeding, which gnarl plant tissues, in such a way that they can feed on many more kinds than relative taxa. Predatory mites are one popular option for the control of broad mites, and this video will focus primarily on Amblyceus swirskii, along with another type 3b Amblyceus cucumeris and type 2 Neocilius californicus. Type 3 mites are generalists that are typically omnivorous, feeding on pollen and nectar, as well as arthropods such as various thrips, russet mites, and spider mites. This omnivory gives them a great advantage over specialists. They can be sustained in a crop as a preventative force if provisioned with food. Banker crops that produce pollen like peppers or produce extra floral nectaries like castor bean are excellent choices for this strategy. Pollen can also be bought from biocontrol companies for this exact purpose. The subtype B denotes a preference for glabrous leaves, devoid of many hairy trichome structures. Type 2 are more specialized as predators of spider mites and other prey with type 1 mites being singularly specialized against spider mites, like Persimilis. According to a life history study on Goma eggplant, Amblyces swirskii was shown to consume an average of 32 female broad mites per day, and that higher prey densities both elicited higher rates of predation as well as egg laying. Swirskii are able to complete their entire life cycle on pollen alone, and those that were fed maize pollen exclusively more than doubled in lifespan, from about 39 days to 85. Net reproduction rate, intrinsic rate of increase, and finite rate of increase were all higher on pollen diets. Net reproduction rate is the number of females birthed by the female population, which in turn controls the growth potential of said population, at least in this case. On broad mite, females produce about 6 females in their lifespan, and about 19 on pollen. Intrinsic rate of increase is births minus deaths per generation. On broad mite, populations birthed about 0.13 progeny per day, and 0.16 on pollen. Finite rate of increase can be thought of as the population's growth factor, and was 1.13 on broad mite and 1.17 on pollen, a little more rapid in the latter than the former. Population doubling time is of course the time it takes for a population to grow twice its size, and was about 4.5 days on pollen and about 5.5 days on broad mites. These population dynamics make them well suited to preventative application in appropriate environments. The reason for this increased performance on pollen is due to predation cost. Prey must be sought and captured before being eaten, while pollen sources are generally highly abundant and located in a single location. This makes the energy cost of seeking prey less efficient for the purpose of egg laying, although generation time was quicker on broad mite by about 5 days. In an Israeli field trial, Amblyceus cucumeris was tested at different densities for the control of broad mite on organically grown sweet pepper cultivars for 3 years. The first growing season was in 1999, wherein sachets were deployed approximately 2 meters apart along a 7 by 15 meter tunnel. Peppers that were not administered with cucumeris showed markedly increased signs of broad mites during sampling, but since the control group did not have broad mites or other pests, differences in production are due to reasons other than broad mite infestation and so are not comparable. In the second growing season of 2000, liquid sulfur was applied to all plants due to uncharacteristically intense signs of broad mite damage two days prior to cucumers applications.
Problems with the padre mildew species Levelula tarica necessitated trialing be shortened. This time, applications were not sachets, but approximated bulk releases of approximately 600 predators and three times as many feeder mites at different release densities. Every plant, every second plant, and every fourth plant. Expectedly, the application that was least dense was slowest to control broad mites, though the difference between even this treatment and no treatment is staggering, with broad mite sample populations growing exponentially. The third growing season of 2001 showed a significant reduction in broad mite population compared to control using the same release rates. The two highest release rates resulted in nibla peppers that were about 40 centimeters taller compared to control, and both treated nibla and parker peppers exported about 85 to 90 percent of their produce, while control only exported 60 to 75 percent. Finally, a report from the University of Florida tested the viability of Neocilius californicus in bell pepper transplants as a preventative treatment. There were two experiments. The first concerned legionnaire bell pepper seedlings, which were infested with two gravid broad mites per plant at three different stages of development and treated with two californicus per plant at varying times before, during, or after time of infestation to see how their presence affected initial infestations. Seedlings that were administered californicus before or during infestations had similar growth variables to those that were not infested, but they still hosted both broad mites and californicus at a ratio of 7 to 1. Curative releases of two californicus per seedling within nine days of infestation resulted in growth variables 60% smaller than non-infested seedlings, as opposed to a 5% maximum decrease in growth for preventatively treated seedlings. The second experiment compared legionnaire bell pepper seedlings infested with two female broad mites, then transplanted three days later. There were four treatment groups, two or four californicus per plant at various times before, during, and after infestation, five weekly sulfur applications starting before or after the infestation, no treatment, and a non-infested control. Yields of fully developed red fruits from plants treated with four californicus per seedling six days before, during, or four days after transplanting were similar to sulfur applications and uninfested control. Only preventative applications of two californicus per seedling were similar to uninfested controls when applied a week in advance of transplant. Otherwise, applications still led to significant vegetative and productive impairment. Despite this, all groups treated with californicus had no pest pressure during fruiting. None of these reports are meant to be a comparison showing that one predatory mite is better than the other. Like I've spoken about in previous videos, the right species is definitely circumstantial and dependent on the environment in which it is being utilized. That's why it's so important to understand their life tables, their behaviors, and other aspects of IPM regarding the use of predatory mites and other organisms. Hopefully this quick and dirty explanation shows the difference between three predatory mites against the same pest species in different settings. Someone who uses these mites may benefit from this information, which I will link in the description below. If you have any questions about these predatory mites or the research in general, please comment or give me a message and let me know what your questions are and I'd be happy to assist you.